In this tutorial, we're going to go and open our site model drawings and site project drawings and we're going to start linking in our building model. So this is our building model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it's saved, closed. Okay. Now my building model is saved in a certain location. Just remember I've been working in this shared location. Now my site model, I'm going to open and add this information to my site model. Okay. And we will do the we'll do the reverse operation so that we can get the correct information in our building model. So let's quickly delve in how this is done. Open your site model quick very quickly. Okay. This process is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to say ignore all links. So if I go to manage links, sometimes you can go and see if there's any information missing. This will warn you what's missing. Okay, so that's important. Okay, but first off, we're going to go to our site plan or site working model. I'm going to go to site working rather. Now in this view, all I want to see if I go to VG, imported categories, I'm going to use my site civil. You can also use the site boundaries drawing, doesn't matter. I'm going to switch this on and I'm going to switch everything. I just want my site cadastral lines, switch that off just like that, press apply. Press OK because all I need are the site boundary lines. Okay. Now I can also hide. So use the temporary hide function. Hide element. So hide element. All I'm after is the site boundary. I can also hide my reference plane. So I can hide that as well. Hide element. Okay. I want very basic information that I want to work with here basically. Okay. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to architecture sorry insert link Revit and I'm gonna go and find my building file and I'm gonna leave everything as is I'm gonna press open okay now you would have noticed this has brought your file in okay you can see this is actually brought it in quite accurately but if I move it around so let me explain something so if I move this around you'll see it will move now this is the problem with masses you won't be able to see your masses, so you might have to go to show masses. Now your show, now it will show the mass information. Now this mass information needs to fit right at this point over here. And you'll notice it's brought in all the grid and level information quite accurately. So that's good. So basically all I need to do now, in this view, I'm going to go to True North or Project North. Just remember, you might find, I'm just going to do this, you might find it came in. Depends how your view was orientated. You might find that your project might come and skew. So that's not too much of a train smash because we're going to make sure that this lines up. Okay, so I'm going to grab the Revit linked file and you just remember at the bottom here it tells you if you select something, it'll tell you that's the Revit link file and in the filters function you can see that you've got the link as well. I'm going to move this information. So I'm going to move this file from there and remember SE snap end I'm going to move this information from there to there because that's where it's located I'm going to use the rotate tool place place it along there and I'm going to grab that point there and I'm going to slap it down to there great now to double check I'm going to use my line weight tool and you see there's no overline line work so that means that this information has come in accurately okay if I go to 3d view now you'll notice now in the middle of my contextual building I will now have a contextual mass so if I go to shaded you will notice now that I've got a conceptual mass model that's now plugged in the only problem that we have is it's not set up correctly in terms of the correct level so I'm going to go back to site working okay remember with project north activated I'm going to create a very basic section to this building okay and I'm going to go to the section view I can change the scale 1 to 200 now or 1 to 500. Okay, I can go to the section view now. Now in my section view, I'm going to switch on shaded again. And I'm going to switch on fine detail. Now you'll start seeing that this basement level 1 is aligned to your level 0. Okay, in essence. Don't worry about the levels in the site project for the time being. All that you need to understand is I need to move this Revit linked up model to the correct level. Now you can see the topography slopes. Now this is something that you're going to have to factor into your building when you start designing your building. 
So this is a great visual cue to tell you, listen here, your building is sloping in one direction. So you'll need to be careful. So remember, this is the square over here and there's a gentle slope going towards the building. Okay, so I'm going to pull this back. I'm going to change this to 200 as well. So the data is easier to work with and I can get better information to look at. Basically, just for this time being, I'm going to grab this Revit model and I'm going to move it up. So remember, my level zero must try and line up with the ground. Okay, and you can see, I can start seeing where my level zero is. And you find I might have to move the building up a fraction more. So select the Revit link model and I'm going to move this up by 170. So I have a threshold between the site and my ground floor of my building in essence. Now, this is quite important to realize. Now you'll notice where we've got this avenue over here. So if I go to 3D view, you'll notice on this side of the building, I have a massive step now between this walkway or this arcade avenue that was here, this pedestrianized street. So you'll see at this side of the building, we have a massive step. And on this side of the building, we're quite level with the, the site surroundings. Okay, so that's information that you're gonna have to go and play with, grapple with and adjust. Okay, but in essence, you'll notice now that my Revit model, so my building Revit model is now plugged in accurately into my site model. The last step that I need to do is that I need to share the coordinates from the site model and transfer them to my Revit building model. So in future, if things move and change, I can make sure that both models line up. Okay, so how we do this? If we go to VG, I'm gonna switch on the settings so you understand what's going on. I'm gonna go to site settings, site settings, internal origin, leave that off for now, project base point and survey point, press apply. Now, you will notice that the survey point and project base point for the site model are way down here and you'll see there's level zero right at the bottom there. You'll notice if you zoom in, level zero is down there on this level. You'll notice that's way down here. Okay, there's level zero. Okay, level zero. Now, you'll notice for my Revit project building, so the building model, you'll notice that the survey point and survey point are right up here. I need to make sure that the two survey points are at the same place. Okay, so how do we do that? We're gonna to go to manage and we're gonna go and say location. Over here, I'm gonna to go to site and I'm gonna change this rename. I'm gonna call this site. So this is gonna become my new site location. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and say coordinates, publish coordinates, and I'm gonna publish them to this Revit model. Now, just remember, this building, so it depends if you have multiple buildings, each building will be given its own name, but you'll find that this Revit site internal is its internal origin. So I'm gonna press okay. Now you would notice that the survey point of this model, so of the Revit building model, is no longer over here. It now coincides with the shared coordinate of your site model. So it means in future, if you're bringing stuff back and forth, all that you have to do is link it by shared coordinates. Okay, so all I need to do now is save my site model and I'm gonna say save. And I'm gonna say save, save model position back to link. All it means is it's gonna save the position back to that link file. And now I can simply save this model and press close. Okay, file, close project. Now I'm gonna go back to my building project Okay, now if I go to site, okay, now if I go to 3D view now, you'll notice VG, just remember massing, you need to turn this back on. If you want to do this on a permanent basis, you go to VG, just remember at some point you won't want to switch this off again. Now I know it's permanently on in this view. If I go to VG and I go to site, and I go to site information, project base point and survey point, press apply, press OK. You'll notice that my survey point is way down there and it's in a different orientation to this. And it tells you true north, etc. It's really set up your true north, everything. Okay, so that's the beauty of using shared coordinates. Now this is where the magic starts to happen. In my site view, I'm gonna go and link back the site model into my building model. So I'm gonna go to insert, link CAD, 
I'm going to go to site model and I'm going to say my shared coordinates I'm going to press open okay now everything has come in exactly correct and because I set up my views so I can extend this information further in this direction now if I go to 3d view you will notice my building is now my Revit site model now is linked into my building model what's good about this this information won't pollute your building model so you can focus on designing and developing your building without all these other levels and information from this model just remember this does get overwhelming what I like to do my 3d view switch on section box and I like to cut away the inf unnecessary information okay so this is very important I'm just going to focus on the information around my building just remember you might have to repeat this exercise every time you create a new 3d view or you just duplicate this existing 3d view but for now okay you can see now it means if I go to my elevations you'll see that all my elevation information now will start showing correctly just remember you're starting to see a lot more of the information of the site so and by the way make sure that your and switch on shaded view fine and shaded okay so now you can start seeing your building okay so this is very very intuitive very powerful okay even in section view all right okay I'm gonna stop the video there because I think we've learned a lot about how to get this all working together now you can con control you can start developing your site further adding more levels so that you meet the correct height requirements and remember we'll work on a basement in a later video Okay, but for now you can see we've got some really good data in our project file. Okay, very, very powerful.